In 7.1, we introduced this concept of probability, the likelihood that some event is going to occur, the likelihood that some event will occur. So I want you to learn these key words. If it's a 0%, we're going to call it impossible. It's impossible. Even if there's a one in a million chance. Has anyone seen the movie Dumb and Dumber? It's a pretty common oh, movie. Yeah. He's got a famous line in that movie. And she said, you know, he said, what are the chances, you know, that you would like me? And she said, like, one in a million. And he's like, so you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> one in a million is not highly likely, okay? But if it's anything other than zero, it's going to fall under the unlikely category, okay? So even at a 0.1% chance of something happening, it's not impossible, okay? So... Other than that, though, for unlikely, and we're going to explore uh, some scenarios here, it's what percentage is it closer, closest to? So if I gave you 30%, is 30% closer to 25% or is it closer to 50%? It's closer to 25%, so I would say unlikely. So these percentages, um, we just basically gravitate towards the ones it's closest to. But again... If it's 99%, is it certain that it's going to happen? No, I would just say highly likely, okay, or, or likely. So I want you to learn these words, all right, because it makes grading, honestly, when we're grading homework, quizzes, tests, if we're all using different words to represent these different categories, it would be difficult to grade. And you'd be like, oh, well, that's what I meant. Well, we need to just all use the same word to describe the likelihood. All right, so that's why we have the scale in here. So in example one, um, and really in all of 7.1, we're trying to warm up to this idea of recognizing how many possible outcomes are there, and then what is our targeted outcome to identify this is what I want to my result to be, okay? And that sets us up for calculating probability. So we see the spinner over here, and we see that there are how many possibilities? There are six, even though one of them repeats, right? That I still can land on this one. I can land on the bottom one. There are still six spaces that I can land on. So my answer to this question would be six. There, there's six outcomes, six potential outcomes. Now, on the second one, what are the favorable? So favorable means this is what I want to happen. What are the favorable outcomes of spinning an even number? Two. 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 Oh, I like it. One third. Okay, very good. The answer would just be two, but I like where you're heading with it because you would say two out of six. And that is calculating probability. Favorable out of possible, which we'll, we'll kind of just touch on slightly in just a minute. And how many ways can spinning a number, get this, less than two occur? Three. Not three. It has to be less, oh, I'm sorry, yes, it is three. It's less than two. Sorry, I thought you were saying four and I, I didn't look back at the spinner. So two cannot be part of it because it has to be less than two. So that's why I would say three. And if you're saying 50%, you are correct because three out of six is one half. So if I was actually calculating the probability, I would say it's a 50% chance or equally likely that I would spin a number less than two or not, okay? All right, how are we doing on that? Just kind of recognizing, okay? Really not a whole lot of calculation at this point, although I do like that you guys are already kind of heading there. All right, so now we have um, some uh, letter tiles, okay? I want you to answer these three questions on your notes, okay? You randomly choose one of the tiles shown from a hat. Answer A, B, and C, just in the same way that we just did the last slide. How many possible outcomes are there, guys? Eight. There's eight. And then what are the favorable outcomes of choosing a vowel? Three. Three. Okay, I love it. Somebody said 37.5% because if you were to divide it by 8, change it to a percentage, that's how you would do it. Man, you guys could teach this lesson. All right, how many ways um, can choosing a consonant occur? Five. Okay, that's just, if there's three vowels, that means there's five consonants. Um, okay, so now next example, 
Ironically so, because we had just a terrible thunderstorm last night, we've got a thunderstorm example. But I want you to use the scale at the beginning of the notes, okay? So we're using those words. So look at the rain, it says 80%, okay? So which category would that fall closest to? What word? Yes, it is likely. And today, that is definitely a true statement. Um, I would say certain. You know when you see 100% on the chance of rain that it's going to be a bad one. It was like literally 100% all night. It was at 100%, 90%. It was, it was a pretty bad storm. Uh, what about thunderstorms? Um, equally yes, equally likely. Um, I'm fine if you just put equally likely, but you need to understand it's equally likely that it will either happen or not happen, okay? So it might rain, it might not. It literally could go either way, all right? What about hail? Unlikely. unlikely. It is unlikely. I need you also to understand that even if I put a point in front of the 1-5 and it was a 0.15% chance, it's still not impossible, okay? So anything greater than zero, now can you have a negative likelihood? No, okay? Anything greater than zero would be unlikely. So even if that was 0 0.15, I would still say, now maybe I would say highly unlikely or next to impossible, but it's not impossible, okay? All right, so pretty straightforward on that. Um, now in the next example, we do need the table um, and I missed one yesterday. Did I? Was it this class or the standard class? Yeah. So I missed another one. There's a table on the page on page 286. You need to see the statistics so you can actually calculate the relative frequency, which is what some of you have been doing this whole lesson. You're taking how many times the event actually occurred. And dividing it by the total number of times you conduct the experiment. This is actually something also called uh, experimental probability, which we're going to learn about in 7.2. Okay? So on page 286, it says you flip a bottle. Has anybody ever played that game or yeah. seen someone? It's a little annoying if like 100 people are in the lunchroom doing that because you just hear the thump on the table. And all my boys are laughing right now because they're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So according to the table, okay, 25 flips, how many landed upright according to the table? I was about to say that. How many, guys? Two out of 25. So are you going to put your bet on this, this kid? No, I'm not. I'm not. No course betting and gambling we don't do but if I were to say hey I think they're gonna do a good job at this probably not so two out of 25 though doesn't mean anything okay so what I would do is I would divide that I'll go ahead and just tell you if you divide 2 by 25 you get 0 0.08 okay but that's not that's not a probability that doesn't really mean anything to us we need to express it as a percentage so 0.08 as a percentage is 8%, okay? And again, th this kid's odds of landing upright are not good, okay? But what would be the word that I would use to describe it? Unlikely, okay? Don't say trash. That's not one of the words. Okay, all right. Okay, so that's it for example three. Okay, look at example four. In example four, let's read, let's read it together. It says, each turn in a game, you randomly draw a token from a bag and replace it. So you put it back. That's going to be significant um, later on, not necessarily for this lesson. But replacing the token uh, does carry some significance, okay? So just take it for what it's worth for now. The table shows the number of times you draw each type of token. So now, and I would have preferred for them to put another word in here, uh, predict. It doesn't say that, but that's what you're doing. Predict now, based on the statistics you have, how many times you can expect to draw a positive point value in 35 turns. So what you need to do is you need to calculate 
the relative frequency of this experiment. Okay, so this has been done, but it's not the 35. I need to see, okay, out of all of these flips, how many total flips were there? Can you count them up real quick? 10, 17, 20 flips, okay? So 20 was the total number of experiments from the table. Now, from that table, how many of them were positive flips? 17. An easy way, guys, to determine that is there were only three negative flips. So if there's 20 and there was only three negatives, how many were positive? 17, okay? Now, I need you to calculate that percentage, okay? This gives me the percentage of flipping a positive point value, or I'm sorry, not flipping, but drawing from the back, okay? So what did you get when you divided 17 by 20? 85%, okay? So now, get this, guys, listen. In order to predict... Okay, I am going to use a familiar friend. A equals P times W, where the part or how many flips would happen would be the percentage of some predicted outcome. 35, guys, look at 35. 35 would be the total number of experiments. So would 35 stand for A or W? W because 35 is the total number of times I would draw or I would pull from the bag. So I would take my percentage, I got to change it back to a decimal. Change it back to a decimal, 0. 0.85 times 35, okay? So if on my first experiment, I drew, I drew a positive point value 85% of the time, I can take 85% of 35, a predicted amount, and that would tell me how many I could expect on the second experiment. Now, again, it's not a foolproof system because it, it really is just the luck of the draw, right? Okay, but based on those numbers, what would you get if you did 0.85 times 35? Okay, now, can you have a fraction of a draw? Can you draw something three-fourths of a time? No. So here, that's not a practical answer. I would just say it's going to be about 30. About 30. And again, you're not necessarily trying to come up with some exact answer. You're just saying it's going to be about 30 times. About 30 times. So you see, guys, we can use relative frequency. All right? This is helpful even for, like, um, in a sports scenario, like basketball. Someone gets a technical foul, and I'm thinking, uh, I, need, I need someone to shoot. I'm going to pick that kid, okay? So I think my video cut out on that example, but hopefully we caught everything. Um, that is it for example four and everything you need for 7.1.